Welcome back, I'm the Backyard Grill Sergeant, here to take your grilling to the next level. Today you can see that my backyard is just a little bit different than normal. I'm actually at the campground, uh, my wife and I are here uh, for the weekend. Uh, so I decided to do a uh, review video on the Expert Grill. It's a kettle grill that you get at Walmart. Okay, so I'm going to go over some of the features uh, of the grill that I kind of like and I don't like. Um, the first thing uh, that I really like about this grill is the price, okay? Um, this grill is, I don't want to say it's the same quality, I'm just saying it's similar uh, to a Weber kettle grill. And uh, Weber kettle grills are, are much more expensive than this one. This one I picked up for $87 at Walmart. Uh, it's made out of a fairly heavy duty metal. Uh, it's got the ash can on the bottom that's removable and it's got the vents here that are adjustable like this uh, which I find uh, very nice uh, it's got a third it's got a uh, temperature gauge here and a vent port on the other side like this and then when you open up the grill this is one of my uh, favorite features of the grill right here uh, on the grates uh, that has the grate that lifts up like this so that as the uh, charcoal starts to run down uh, run out you can just lift this up right here and add a little bit more charcoal and then also on the inside the grill comes with two of these uh, little uh, charcoal baskets uh, which are actually really great I even really only ever use just one of these and I'll take you over here so you can see the inside of the grill. And now you can see down inside here uh, the grill does have a grate down inside uh, where you uh, you can just put charcoal right on this or, or you can take these dividers and put charcoal like that. You can put them put all over to one side or uh, a lot of times what I do is I actually take one of these out and I just cook with one of these and I'll put the charcoal in here like this so let me uh, show you how I do that first thing I do is I actually um, bought one of those fire starter logs and I cut it up into cubes about like this size and it's a little bit mushy so what I do is I take and I break it up and I just put it inside uh, here like this and I take a couple cubes I take a couple of these cubes and I just break them up and put them in. This is just something that allows me to get the charcoal going. We're not going to cook with this. There we go. I like to use a hardwood charcoal. In this case it's royal oak. And then I just take put the charcoal in here like this. Now as you can see, I'm not filling up the whole bottom with charcoal uh, because Today I'm going to be doing hamburgers and hot dogs and what's really great about this little basket is that I can have a zone where I can have indirect heat which is over here and a zone over here which is directly over the coals which is direct heat. So I can actually do most of the cooking over the indirect heat and then when I want to finish it off, finish off the hamburgers and hot dogs, get that char, I just bring it over the coals and then I uh, get that char on it. There we go, We've got a nice pile of coals in there. Nice. Okay, so now I, well, you want to make sure the uh, ash can uh, is, uh, is attached to the bottom. So this is one of the things that I find a little bit difficult about the grill uh, because uh, it, it can be a little bit difficult to uh, put the ash can on. As you can see, I didn't have much trouble there. Um, but I can show, I'll show you why uh, it can be difficult because there are these three pins, excuse me, my hands are dirty, I'm going to wash my hands in a minute, I was just using the charcoal. 
but um, the three pins right here. Okay, so if when you put the ash can on, if you have it turned one of the other ways like that, this handle bumps up against the legs of the uh, the grill, so it can actually be kind of difficult. So if you once you figure out what direction this needs to be turned, uh, it's quite easy to put on. Uh, also, uh, one thing that kind of bothered me about this uh, is about two or three um, cooks into using this, this handle actually fell off. Uh, the bolts loosened up and fell off. Uh, all I did is I just took a wrench and I tightened them back down and I haven't had a problem with them since. So uh, I think maybe it came pre-assembled at Walmart. So maybe whoever assembled it didn't do a very good job. Uh, there we go. As you can see, the uh, ash can is not, is not difficult. Uh, I like to cook with the vents wide open. Okay, so I just turn it so the hole's there. And let's go ahead and see if I can get these fire starters lit. Okay, so I'm having a little bit of difficulty getting the fire started. So here's the trick that I like to do, because sometimes that happens. And, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, I'll just take uh, a couple of pieces off my um, bag from my charcoal, and I'll just bundle it up like this. And then I'll take the charcoal out. Because it's not lit yet. Okay, I'm not burning myself. Put it down in there and get that lit. There. Okay, now you can see the... <laughs> it took me a couple of minutes, but I got it going fine. Uh, so you can see the paper is uh, burning fine there. Uh, so once the uh, charcoal itself is lit, I'll just wait for the paper and a little bit of fire log to burn away and then once that um, once that happens we'll be ready to start cooking uh, one thing I would like to take a second to note is that you can pro you you could obviously say hey why is this guy not using a uh, charcoal chimney well that's an excellent question I actually forgot to bring my charcoal chimney with me this weekend um, which is exactly why I'm lighting the charcoal right in the grill like this this is just one way to show you how you could get it lit even without a charcoal chimney. Uh, also notice that I'm not even using, I'm not using uh, lighter fluid or anything like that. I'm just using um, some paper and a little bit of fire starter log and that's uh, plenty to get it going. Uh, so uh, I do have a video on how to use a charcoal chimney. So um, go ahead and check that out if you want. All right fire is uh, going along quite nicely there um, it's certainly not ready to start cooking okay I'm just uh, it's got a good flame going it's a good strong fire so I'm gonna go ahead and then put the top grate on like that so this is these are the uh, parts right here see this right here this is what I like because you can actually lift this like that and add more charcoal into there of course it's not hot enough yet um, that's why I grabbed it with my fingers uh, if it was hot, you know, you need to use some tongs so you don't burn yourself. So uh, let's let's go ahead. I'm gonna wash my hands. My hands are gag nasty right now. So let me do that, and I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. As you can see, it's been about 20 minutes or so, and you can see that the uh, paper has burnt down, and the fire starter logs have burnt down. So at this time, there's not much smoke coming off it anymore. So it's a good time to go ahead and put the lid on like this and as you can see here uh, the grill has a little vent here on one side and a temperature gauge on one side what I like to do is I, ha I like to have the vent um, as far away from the charcoal as possible uh, what the reason I do that is because the heat will draw up and pull across the inside of the grill like that and, uh, and I like to ha I just like to cook with it wide open that's the way I usually do it um, and so now we'll just let the grill get heated up and once it's fully warmed up I'll uh, scrape off the thing and we'll be ready to put on some hamburgers. Okay the grill is nice and hot. Now 
this is one thing I don't like about this grill. There's no good place to put this lid. Um, so you need a good spot on the ground or somewhere uh, to put it. I'm just going to set it over here. It's on the gravel. It's not a fire hazard. Um, now right here, this is something that I do like about the grill. Look at this. So now notice I'm using the prongs, lifting up. Now I have access to this tar pole. And I'm going to go ahead and add a few more pieces. And when it's really hot, I like to use these the pinchers to grab some charcoal and just set it in there. And then you just take your pinchers, close it back over. Easy as that. Next thing course you want to get it scraped off so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down feels nice and hot let's get some hamburgers on there so I am using frozen patties today you know what sometimes you just want to keep it simple when you're camping Sometimes that's the best thing to do. So I'm just gonna take, this is another thing that I really like about this grill. Is the fact that um, you're able to use direct and indirect heat. Boy, these things are really frozen together. Give me a second here. There we go. So as you can see, the fire is over here, and I'm going to be putting, starting out with the hamburgers over indirect heat. One thing I like to do with these frozen patties is uh, they're not really great on taste sometimes, so I like to add a little McCormick steak seasoning. Uh, this actually makes a great flavor on these patties. So I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle a little bit over the top. Just makes a little, uh, it's a good cheat. Uh, it makes it a real easy way to get some good flavor in some uh, cheap ham uh, hamburgers. And next thing is we got some hot dogs. So I got a knife here. And again, the indirect heat is nice because you can have hot dogs on here for a long time without burning them. There we go. See, I'm getting them as far away from the fire as I can. There we go. And let's go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of seasoning on the hot dogs. Why not? I actually did that one time by accident and it actually turned out really delicious. So now I do it all the time now. <laughs> there we go. There. Got eight hamburgers and a pack of hot dogs. I don't know what's that, 10 hot dogs on there. So let's go ahead and get this lid on here and let these get cooking and I'll be back to back with you in a few minutes. All right, let's see how these burgers are looking. Ooh boy, look at that. They smell delicious. One thing I like to do when I'm cooking, I like to use one of these little uh, um, in thermometers. You just go ahead and put it in the meat and see what the temperature is. 112. 111 so it's getting there so it's coming along pretty nice let's wait a little while before we start flipping them all right the burgers are smelling delicious and it is time to get them flipped over Whoopsie, that happens sometimes. All right, so 
when I flip them. I like to go ahead and add a little more seasoning to the other side. There we go. Put this back on. And we'll be back when it's close to start putting them over the direct fire. Alright, let's check the temperature of these burgers and see where they're at. 137. Alright, let's go ahead and put them right over the charcoal and finish them off. So with these burgers, I like to cook... I like to cook them to about 165 degrees. Um, that's just, you know, that's well done. Um, you know, you can you cook them to, you know, you can cook them to a little less than that if you want. That's up to you, but that's just the way my family likes them, so that's the way I do it. There we go. Get them moved over there. Excellent. Let them cook like that for a few minutes, and we'll be right back. All right, they've been on that side for a little bit, so let's get them flipped over. As you can see, the flame is flaring up quite a bit. Um, one of the things, once you put the lid back on, uh, it cuts the oxygen down a little bit so the flame actually stops flaring up. So that's one of the great things about the lid. All right, let's go ahead and check the temperature of these burgers and see where they're at. When they're right over the coals like this, I like to take it, the spatula and move them off to the side and check the temperature like that so I don't burn my hand. Alright, we're looking at 150. It's getting close. They're getting close. Let's check that one. This one's probably a lot closer. It was right over the heat. Alright, so that one's 165. That's right there. So that one's ready to... I'm going to let it... This one's got a little char to it. Yeah, it's nice and hot. So let's go ahead and take that one off. So these ones in the middle of the flame, these are ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and take these off, put them in the pan over here. Move these other ones over to the middle. As you can see, this is a good little grill. It works. Well, there you have it, folks. The $87 Expert Grill from Walmart. It works pretty darn well, and uh, the price is pretty good at $87. Um, there are a few things about it that I would like. I would like the quality. Uh, I, it kind of falls apart sometimes, so you got to tighten it up. Um, so I got Mrs. Grill Sergeant back there in the background. And uh, so she's ready for some hamburgers, so let me finish these off and let's have some dinner. I'll see you next time.